We are starting uh, our monthly Pluribus webinar, and I know people are currently uh, joining in. So let's, uh, let's give uh, another few minutes uh, before we are actually really starting this webinar. So I'm just you know, giving some space for people to join from uh, all over the world because today it's a truly global uh, webinar with people coming from uh, different regions. So we're very excited about that. So we just give uh, another couple of minutes and then I'll give you the context of the webinar today. So it's uh, always a, a joy to, uh, to be able to have important conversations about uh, the value of uh, inclusion and diversity in the workplace, but also in the world. Uh, it goes, of course, beyond you know, the, the corporate world. And this is really a, a topic that uh, is close to, uh, to our, our hearts. So I suggest uh, to uh, officially um, uh, open this uh, global webinar and welcome everyone for uh, being uh, with us today. Uh, uh, so uh, my name is Isabelle Pujol. I'm the founder and director of Pluribus. And Pluribus is a global uh, consultancy dedicated to the topic of inclusion and diversity. Uh, we are absolutely committed to support you, uh, whether you are uh, an individual, a team, an organization, to really succeed through inclusion and diversity. And one we have decided a, a year ago um, is to uh, host this kind of webinar once a month to address different topics of uh, inclusion and diversity, and especially with our uh, pluribus uh, facilitators, consultants that are based everywhere in the world. Uh, so they all have um, a different perspective to address these topics. So today, uh, I'm extremely delighted to uh, welcome Jean-Michel Monod. I know Jean-Michel for many, many years. I mean, he will introduce himself uh, and he will probably talk about his experience in, in the uh, diversity and inclusion topic, but we've been working with Jean-Michel for, for years. So it's such a, a joy for me to uh, welcome you, Jean-Michel, to address this topic, which is uh, how to engage men in the conversation of the DNI uh, topic, so how do how do we ensure that men are part of the organ, uh, of the conversation? Because it's true that when people think about diversity and inclusion, they would think about specific groups, specific category, and especially when we talk about uh, mixity, mixity or equal opportunity, the first reaction is to talk about women. So how do we? include men in the conversation how do we engage them so just for uh, before I, I hand over to uh, to jean-michel and i'm really really excited about uh, this session jean-michel thank you so much for hosting the session just uh, some uh, logistics the the whole uh, webinar is lasting one hour this uh, is going to be recorded so it means that uh, we will be able to send you the the version you know uh, through emails or through our different uh, social networks. We have the opportunity to ask questions. There is in the Zoom system uh, on the bottom of your screen uh, an icon where you could uh, post your uh, questions. But today is a little bit special because we will have uh, an interactive way, but I'm not going to say more because I, I really want you know, Jean-Michel to, uh, to introduce this uh, new interactive way of having a a webinar a bit different. So thank you all for joining and I can see that uh, there are more than 25 people already uh, online. Uh, Jean-Michel, the virtual uh, floor is yours and um, really looking forward to this conversation. Hello, hi everyone and uh, hola, uh, hola Isabel, I know you are currently in Spain, so hello from almost sunny Normandy in France where I'm based. Just want to check that uh, the logistical things are, are working, so can you see my screen? Isabel, can you just confirm that you see the, the slide with the title of the, of the webinar? Not yet, I can Not see yet. you. Uh -huh. uh, 
there there is maybe something I, I missed in the in the you need, you need to share your screen okay that's I'm sorry it doesn't it seems to not, it was working shouldn't you give me the 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 management of the the meeting because yeah. when I click mm -hmm. it should it should it should come along um, I'm just thinking that I also have the slides. So do you want me yeah. to show the slides from my side? Yes, uh, while we are uh, trying to solve this, uh, this issue, uh, let me uh, briefly introduce myself. So as you said, uh, I'm Jean-Michel Monod, I'm French, and I, I think anybody, everybody can hear that and guess that I'm 100% French. I've been uh, uh, working in the corporate world uh, since uh, early 80s, so quite a, a long uh, journey. Uh, I've been doing sales, I've been involved in management, operational management, and uh, since uh, uh, 2007, I'm 100% uh, dedicated to uh, diversity and inclusion. In the first nine years in that uh, uh, journey, I was uh, with Sodexo, I had a global role managing uh, diversity and inclusion, especially focusing on, on Europe. You know that uh, Sodexo is a French-based uh, company. And since uh, 2016, so uh, two years ago, I uh, changed uh, uh, my role and became a DNI and uh, professional, uh, working with uh, different companies. I'm a senior associate with, uh, with Pluribus. And with Isabel, we are uh, we are delivering uh, trainings, conferences, keynotes, hundred percent dedicated to diversity and inclusion. In addition to that, in my personal life, I'm also involved in non-for-profit organizations. So I run a, a local uh, organization, and uh, uh, this year we are focusing on gender equality with a piece of theater that is hundred percent dedicated also to to this topic. And I'm also a member of a, a French organization that is called uh, the uh, uh, Au Conseil à l'égalité, so the High Council for Gender Equality, uh, that is uh, um, responsible for implementing gender equality in all uh, the uh, French politics. Uh, so uh, it can be the social ones, uh, the army, the finance, making sure that uh, there is a gender lens in everything that, uh, that we do. So this is fascinating. Uh, and I must say that I'm the happiest man on, on earth, uh, as I, I think I'm paid to make the world a bit better. So that's great. I'm a bit stressed because I, I don't think that you can see my screen. Uh, have you so have you, do you know what, uh, what we can do? Because otherwise, I will start with that. So Jean-Michel, don't worry, I will then share it from my screen. But, uh, but uh, with, with that, we, we, we won't be able to use Klaxon. That's, uh, that's a shame uh, if you don't see, uh, if you don't see the, the, the screen. So that's uh, the, the, the issue. I don't, I don't know what to do with, the, with this. It, it, it seems to be working. For me, it's, on my screen, it's working, but uh, uh, you don't see my, my slides here. Not yet. Okay, so I, I think we'll do without slides and that's it. Uh, we'll uh, try to, uh, to manage that for future, uh, future uh, webinars. Let's start by uh, setting the context. Actually, since uh, I've started to work on this topic of diversity and inclusion, and especially on gender, each time, I have the opportunity to meet with people. Um, I can very easily see that uh, the majority and the vast majority of the people I have in front of me in conferences, trainings, or whatever, are uh, usually uh, women, the large majority of women. So it's always a question for me, is how does it happen? Why is that so? When it's mandatory, of course, in trainings, we can have balance, but when it's something that people can uh, uh, attend for, uh, uh, for free and they, they decide what to do, men are not here. So uh, this is always a question for me and, and, uh, and uh, something I don't feel comfortable because as you can see, I am a man and I don't think uh, men should be less uh, uncommitted than women in that topic. 
So what we would like, uh, what I would like to do uh, today with you is to, to first think about um, the uh, reasons uh, why men should be engaged. Uh, this seems to be not that intuitive. Um, and men, men could think that they are sowing the branch on which they are uh, sitting by being involved in uh, diversity and especially on gender diversity. So uh, if women get more access to uh, responsibilities, we will lose uh, something. And uh, it's, it's something so strong that I think we need to spend time and energy in, in uh, challenging that uh, approach. Uh, and the first step is perhaps to think about uh, the, this question, why should men be committed to uh, diversity and especially to gender uh, e equality? Um, th that's not a, a, an easy topic and that's where I, I planned to, uh, to have a, a, this black soon to involve you and to ask you about your thoughts. But let me, uh, let me uh, try to, to give my own perspective. Uh, it's, it's critical for me that men understand what they can get from gender diversity. It's not only about uh, uh, being nice, but it starts by being nice and actually more than being nice, being fair. Being fair, I don't think that men have a, a, a lower sense of fairness than women. So it's time now for us as men to show that uh, we have this sense of fairness as it is completely unacceptable, ununderstandable, that women have a, a lower access to, uh, to better jobs, to responsibilities, to equal pay. And as a man, I don't feel comfortable at all with that. So for fairness, for being fair, I really think that men should be 100% uh, committed. Uh, it's not being nice, it's being fair. And being fair is a value that both men and women share. Second aspect, it's being modern. Being modern, if you think about the leaders, the global leaders that we uh, identify nowadays as being modern, what are the names that would uh, for, uh, fall to your, in your mind? The first name I, I, I have, and it's uh, because he's uh, uh, in his role for uh, uh, three, four years, I think it's Justin Trudeau, Justin Trudeau in Canada. I remember, uh, you may have seen this uh, video when he was introducing his government um, four years ago, something like that. And the question was asked by a journalist, uh, Mr. Trudeau, we see that uh, your government is uh, uh, as a good, uh, uh, as a perfect balance between men and women. Why is, why is that? And he just answered, because it's 2015. And that was for me the best answer that he could uh, give because it's so simple. It's just because we are in the 21st century. We are not anymore in the previous one, in the, uh, uh, in, in the 90s. So things have changed. And if you want to be modern uh, as a man, as a woman also, you have to show that uh, this topic of uh, being balanced, being, for, uh, being fair, is something that helps organizations government, companies, and NGOs, uh, cities, or whatever, help them to, to have a better life. So Justin Trudeau was the first. Um, if you think about modern leaders, I think we in France, uh, we, have, uh, we are experiencing uh, big changes in the, in the past uh, uh, months. And since last year, you know, we have a, a new president. Uh, he was elected last year almost one year ago exactly, a day for day, and uh, Emmanuel Macron is uh, clearly and, uh, and strongly committed to gender equality. And in France, as uh, uh, it's been the case in Canada, we have a balanced government with 50% women, 50% men. So it's definitely modern. The modern leaders are showing the way uh, they are walking the talk, saying it's important, and we show that it's important by uh, uh, appointing um, women and men and, uh, and having the two voices that are uh, uh, heard uh, at, at the table. There are also modern leaders uh, in the businesses. 
uh, in companies, in NGOs, and uh, I remember having participated in the, uh, in the writing of a book uh, three years ago, which is called uh, Gender Balance When Men Step Up. Step up. Uh, it's been uh, actually uh, written by uh, French people with French CEOs, but it's been translated to, into English and will be soon translated into Spanish too. And it's about interviewing top leaders who, uh, from companies that have uh, clearly uh, understood the, uh, uh, the impact of uh, gender balance and the, they have done concrete things to make things change. And there are companies that are growing. They have not collapsed because they have more, more women. So they show also that it's modern to have, uh, uh, to have a good gender balance. Modern for political leaders, modern for uh, business leaders. Well, the point is uh, because uh, uh, men should be engaged because we have to all to understand that if we want to our companies, our employers to be sustainable, we have to change something. Uh, I always have this image of uh, dinosaurs. You remember the, 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 this famous day, we don't know exactly when uh, it happened, then when the, the Earth was uh, hurt by a, uh, by a meteorite. meteorite. I don't know the word in English, sorry for that. And, uh, these uh, the, the dinosaurs were killed. We may be uh, in a difficult situation if we do not understand as an uh, organization that something has to, uh, to change. And big companies, even huge companies, can disappear. I remember cases such as uh, Kodak, for instance, which was such a, a, a big uh, company. Or uh, if you remember four or five years ago, who, uh, which company was the uh, biggest one in producing smartphones, uh, uh, that, that has completely changed. And I think things can go very fast in, in, in today's world. And understanding the diversity of the world, and especially the fact that 50% uh, of our consumers, potential consumers, are men and women, 50 plus 50 uh, is equal 100%, uh, is absolutely critical. So uh, we know also, also that, uh, and it's been, it's been shown by uh, research, uh, by Catalyst, by uh, McKinsey, some companies have also uh, um, done uh, excellent research and of course thinking at Sodexo has demonstrated that gender balance team outperform uh, non-gender balance teams and it's absolutely uh, necessary to position it that way. It's gender balance that, um, that uh, improves the performance of companies. It's not about women or men, it's both. Uh, and I think this message is absolutely, absolutely key if we, if we want to engage men. It's not by saying women are better or men are better. It's by saying we, as individuals, we have our own skills and we want every, everyone to have uh, its, uh, its uh, way uh, into the, this world. It's called inclusion. So that's, that's so important. This research, the, the, again, the McKinsey, the Sodexo, the Catalyst, the uh, conference boards, so many, so many research has been uh, done on that. Do we need more? Hmm. I'm always uh, a bit hesitant with that because we, we should know it's make, just make good sense that uh, balance is better than non-balance for uh, performance. So being fair, um, that's uh, uh, something that men should enjoy doing by being committed to, to diversity and inclusion. Being modern, being also sustainable and keeping, my, keeping uh, uh, our job. Uh, if my company is, is, uh, my company is healthy, I will get, I will uh, return, I keep my job, I will develop myself, I will be better paid, and that's uh, definitely something that will uh, uh, make me uh, happier. Happier, by the way, is also something uh, that is uh, critical. Can we change something by being more uh, diverse and inclusive, especially on, on gender, as men? The answer is, of course, yes. Uh, of course, yes, because by being um, uh, um, inclusive, by being more gender balanced, we can have a better life. In today's world, there is more and more stress. We get hundreds of emails every day. We are supposed to answer that email in the minute. And we feel guilty because of, of that. So stress is there. I think that 
working in a gender balanced world and in gender balanced uh, uh, places, workplaces, will help both men and, and women to find a good balance. Balance and gender and uh, work-life balance is not something for, uh, uh, for women. It's not something also for Gen Yers. I hear very often uh, 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 in those days that uh, Gen uh, millennials, Gen Yers need and want more time for them, more, gen, uh, gender, uh, more work-life balance, of course. But the other generations also want uh, more uh, work-life balance. So by having uh, a, share, a fair share of responsibilities, of thoughts in, in companies, men will get better access to uh, work-life balance. And they will benefit from that for the family life, of course, so taking care of, uh, of the children, but also for their personal life. It's not only uh, um, uh, family life. Private life is uh, composed by different uh, elements. What you, exp what you live with your family, but what, what you also live as an indi individual, your personal commitment, activities, sports, uh, culture, whatever. So that's a, a definitely a good accent. Uh, and there is also something that uh, um, uh, men are especially interested in. It's uh, about the, the norms, the social norms that are uh, uh, usually... Um, uh, supported, uh, uh, not supported, that are experienced by men. As a man, you are supposed to be strong. You are supposed to be not too emotive. You are supposed to be very assertive. You are supposed to be very male, actually. And uh, as a woman don't want to be uh, stereotyped uh, with uh, certain colors or certain ways, uh, way of uh, being, I think that men, are also extremely diverse, as, as diverse as women are. And uh, as a man, I don't want to be uh, only considered as uh, this uh, model of, uh, of uh, the, the hero, the one that is, uh, uh, that is fighting for, uh, for, the, uh, for the money, for the power. And uh, uh, this question of power is, uh, is critical now times in, uh, because I think there is a, a completely uh, new way of uh, looking at power. Uh, power was considered as something uh, that was a man exclusivity because of, I, I think, a kind of a army model. Nowadays, the organization, the companies tend to be, be flat. Uh, they tend to, I think it was well, still very far from, uh, from that, but it's, uh, it's a, it's a strong trend, and in, the, uh, in that uh, uh, purpose, I think men will benefit from uh, more freedom, being free to be who we are. It's a kind of a, a coming out. I don't want, uh, it's not that obvious as a man to say, oh, I don't know, or uh, I feel sad. I have emotions sometimes. Uh, we've been suffering from these stereotypes that uh, women also have, and Having a, a better gender balance will help men to be themselves. And I remember this uh, uh, quote from uh, the British organization Stonewall, LGBT organization. They say people perform better when they can be themselves. It's, of course, true for LGBTQ people, but it's also true for men and women. If I can be myself, I can definitely be more happy. And I can, of course, uh, um, get a, a, a higher level of, uh, of performance. So men uh, have a different, uh, different benefits. And there is a last one that may be uh, a bit strange, but I think that due to a better gender balance, men will be richer too. We know that uh, there is a, a big pay gap between men and women. Depending on the country, these, uh, these uh, can be uh, 20, 25 percent or more between men and women. And uh, as men, I think we can benefit from, uh, uh, from uh, more fairness in, in, uh, in, the, in the wages. So uh, if my wife uh, is paid better, uh, it will improve my life too. It will put less pressure on my shoulders. 
So we will also share some uh, some uh, responsibilities in a different way, and and we will feel much more uh, valued by by doing so. So to make it short, if I uh, had to say why men should be committed to diversity and inclusion, first because we want to be fair, and uh, again. As a man, I also want to be fair. It's not something uh, limited to, to women. Second thing, I want to be modern. And uh, modern, 21st century, remember, it's uh, absolutely critical to uh, have a new way of looking at people, not only managing people, but just the way we interact with others. Third thing, I want to keep my job. If my company uh, is healthy, uh, I will keep my job. And uh, to be healthy, there is a, a strong conviction that I have, and I think we all share, that uh, gender balanced teams outperform others. So um, it's, it's a good way to, uh, to, to, to develop performance for the company, but also for individuals. Fourth element, be happier. I will be happier as a man if I can be myself. Uh, I will have a better balance, and I will uh, also uh, um, uh, enjoy um, my own characteristics. And last but not least, I will be richer, not as an individual, but also as a couple or as a family. So that's, these are the reasons that, uh, that will, uh, should convince men to, to commit uh, to uh, more gender equality. Um, and I, my, my, my next point uh, should be, uh, we have so many things, so what else? What else? What do we need more? And I'm thinking of George Clooney. I'm not George Clooney, but <laughs> that's my question. What else? Do we need more to, to be convinced that uh, there is something that we can uh, get as men? I don't think so, but, but maybe there are suggestions. I would be keen to, uh, to have some ideas. Uh, perhaps we can pause a minute, uh, um, Isabel, to ask uh, our attendees if they have some suggestions to uh, convince, to explain to men why they have to be committed before we move to the how, how to engage men, which is a, a critical of point. Uh, uh, and and Jean-Michel, of course you are my Josh Clooney. <laughs> ah, of course, yeah. <clears throat> well, so yes, that's a good idea. What about uh, if uh, we are inviting the participants to use the icon Q's and A's and just uh, write some, some key comments, observation about, uh, you know, why, from your perspective, in your experience, whether it's, uh, you know, in your corporation or thing that you heard, why it's important to engage men. It would be interesting to uh, look at some uh, different perspectives. And I, I, I really, uh, I, you know, sometimes really like your first highlight, uh, Jean-Michel, which is because it's fair. So sometimes we don't even need, from my point of view to come up with a, a big list sometimes it's just because this is the right thing to do you know as a, as, as human beings so i can see there are some uh, comments um so someone is saying uh, so my daughter will be able to use her education to achieve self-actualization in the future so that that's uh, you know one comment it's also a, sort of a legacy for our children. I have another comment. Your point was why are so many in audience just women? And your point, why they want to be committed. But I wonder if they are not there as they don't see what's in it for me. Diversity is for those women. So it's a bit what I don't know, I don't know. Co completely agree uh, with that point. Thank you for, for, for this point. And I think it's something that we will address in the second part of, uh, of this uh, 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 webinar today. It's uh, how we can uh, touch people. I think uh, men don't see the, 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 the topic. And uh, having worked in the, in the corporate world uh, uh, for now quite a long time, I was part of this uh, of, of this uh, group of people of men, don't, uh, just uh, uh, far from this topic, 
completely uh, um, missing the, what the women are experiencing. And I, I'm uh, very often using that example when I was uh, um, a manager in operations in my previous company. Uh, I was part of uh, an executive committee and we had a um, uh, monthly meetings and we, we stayed two days uh, together. Uh, and this uh, group of uh, people we were 20, 18 men and two women. And you know what, between the two days, we had an evening, a nice evening, and we decided to do something to just build a, a team spirit, which is nice. And guess what we decided to do? We decided to play football. Um, and I was very surprised because uh, the two women from the group, they, they just didn't want to play football. And I say, oh, you don't play the game. Uh, you, uh, you, you want to be, uh, you exclude yourself. It, it was just far from my uh, understanding that it was not the best choice to play and to decide playing football during the two, two days. It came to my mind later on when I started to, uh, to, to work on diversity and inclusion, but I was honestly very far from understanding that because I am a man, I'm seeing the world through my male uh, lenses, and it took me time to understand that there were other ways of thinking of the perspectives. So it's true that uh, if we want men to uh, understand the, the what's in it for me that I just shared, there are steps. And that's what uh, uh, I would like now to, to, to discuss with you. There are steps. And, uh, and clearly it's about understanding that um, we uh, don't know that we don't know as a man. I don't know what, the, what it means to be a woman, what it, needs, what it means to be you, Isabel. And you, Isabel, you don't know what it means to be me, to be a man. Even if we are working uh, extensively on these topics, I, I can say that intellectually, I uh, understand quite a bit and uh, I try to do my best to understand more and more, but. I will all, always uh, be, uh, be a man, so uh, I, it needs, uh, uh, it requires energy, it requires learning from uh, my side to understand a bit more and to change, uh, at the end of the day, the behaviors, because what we want to do is to change the behaviors in, in the daily life. Do we have some? Uh... We have some other comments on the why, but also some questions. So another couple on the why. Why? maybe because it's more comfortable to work with the best teams for managers and companies to make the best use of their teams and talent and therefore to be attractive to the best talent so that's uh, it's also you know no no question it's because organizations have more men and women working together so it's how do you capitalize on all the talents and then there are a couple of comments i wonder also about what men might risk to lose any thoughts on this perspective? What immediately comes to mind is the fear of sharing power. Yeah, this is absolutely true. Um, if we are honest, 80% of the top executive roles, at, at least, but it's probably more, 90% of these roles are uh, with men. So, of course, there is something to lose if we consider uh, that uh, we will be uh, happy only if we get an access to the C-suite, for instance, or whatever. So that's, uh, uh, but we tend to, to see things at uh, a zero-sum game. So if I, if I win, the other will lose. And that's exactly the, the issue that we have. If, men, if women win, men will lose. But it's not a fight. It's it's a, or it's not a fight. Men against women or women against uh, uh, men. It's it's changing the world, changing the culture to make it inclusive, uh, and it's much more complex th than that. Uh, so, so of course, men should have less seats in the boarding uh, boardrooms. That's true. But if I uh, have uh, um, if I work for a company that is absolutely brilliant in terms of performance, that is uh, sustainable, that delivers uh, a good uh, performance, that uh, brings happiness at work, uh, I, may, I may completely accept the fact that I'm not in the C-suite. And if I'm not the best person for the role, it's, uh, it's also uh, something that we need to, to learn. It's a humility. Um, sometimes, as men, we may tend to think that by definition, we are 
uh, we are skilled. And we still uh, continue to think that men should demonstrate that they are skilled, uh, which is al always uh, uh, something that I can't understand. We, you know, in France, as uh, in Norway, there, there is a low, uh, a quota low for uh, gender representation in boardrooms. And the first reaction we had uh, was, uh, oh, that means that we will appoint uncompetent women. Perhaps, as if all the men there are uh, in the boardrooms were absolutely 100% uh, skilled. This is completely ridiculous. We can resist. So we have to explain. Uh, sh sh should we move to the next? Yes. Right. I'm just going to read out um, two comments. Yes. Especially uh, the third comment is about, but, okay, I'm really interested in the why, but how can we engage them? So what, yeah. what but just to read out the two comments. Uh -huh. Men can understand, but they really become interested when they face the issue by being married to a working wife or when their daughter uh, is going to the university. So that was one comment. Another one on the UK. In the UK, it's now mandatory to report on gender pay gap. This, was, uh, this has highlighted the mostly inequality with regard to gender, so it has highlighted the topic of gender balance. This shouldn't stop here, though, and companies should look at how they can continue engaging men in the uh, conversation. So I, I, I suggest that you, you are uh, maybe giving some uh, tips on, so, so the how, what are the... the, 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 the yes, the, absolutely. The, the, okay, so I, I think, I, and it's something that uh, um, uh, people know from Pluribus if they have already attended uh, uh, the, the previous webinars or uh, experience trainings, is the three H. Uh, the three H, head, heart, and hands. And I think it's ab absolutely relevant in, in that case. First thing that uh, we need to, to do with men, and by the way, men and women should be uh, uh, together to engage men. Uh, first thing is to, uh, to, to help people to understand. As uh, we said before, if we don't know that something needs to be changed, why should we act? What should we, uh, what, why should we allocate time or money if I don't understand that there is an issue? As when I was uh, uh, in that executive committee playing football, I didn't see the, the problem at all. I was very far from that. So we first need to talk to the head. Um, and it's, you can start by uh, the other edge also, but I think first thing is really to be very clear. We still need, unfortunately, to have business cases. It's always sad, I'm always sad when I'm saying that, that we need business case to, uh, to uh, make it concrete that uh, gender balance or diversity uh, um, and inclusion are absolutely needed. We, need, we have to do that because it's not natural to understand it. We have been raised in, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in, in this idea that we will be uh, <clears throat> very efficient by attracting people that are looking like us, uh, having a, a community of, uh, of thinking. And that's absolutely the contrary that we are trying to, to push now. It's uh, saying that uh, diversity of thoughts, of experience, of cultures, is absolutely uh, a differentiator for a company if we are able to be inclusive. So we have to, to, do, to show uh, uh, facts and figures uh, to make people understand that there is an issue, not only from the corporate world, uh, but also from, uh, from, the, uh, from life. For instance, um, I don't know the figures outside of France, but in my country, 95% of the prisoners, so in, in our jails, are men. I did not know that before. Uh, it, it made me uh, completely uh, uh, hurt. I didn't know that. Uh, when I s look at the figures uh, of women uh, um, being much more, uh, much better at school uh, than men, um, that's something also that is absolutely objective. So just by showing um, some data, not not uh, global data, just data that speak to the person. And that's why it's difficult to use business cases because what will convince me 
uh, uh, of uh, something won't uh, be efficient for somebody else. So we have to find the, the elements that are speaking to uh, 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 anybody's uh, uh, mind, and that's that's a challenge. But definitely, it's a, the, the what's in for me, and why should I I change something in my company, in my organization, in my government, or whatever? It's really understanding. Which means that we have to go uh, through different steps, and uh, uh, in uh, in the pluribus trainings, uh, we are uh, usually using this model of uh, uh, continuous learning, starting from this point. Of, I don't know that I don't know, and uh, if I don't know that I don't know, there is no reason why I should ch change something. It starts uh, to change when I discover that I don't know what is happening, and that's uh, what uh, what uh, business cases, facts, and figures are uh, uh, producing. So starting by uh, this level, understanding, talking to the brain uh, uh, of, uh, of men, as it's also important to do it for, for women. But the second age is, is in my uh, mind, uh, absolutely critical. So the second age is a part, because we need to feel and emotionally engage. If I understand, I, I may... Um, I may be uh, satisfied saying, okay, I've, I've learned something new, but will it change something in the way I behave, in the way I act, in the way I, uh, I design my, my work? I don't think so. I have to, uh, to, uh, to feel personally engaged, uh, and that's uh, the power of, of learning, the power of training. It's training uh, when it's well done, and I... Uh, uh, I think we, we do it well uh, at, at Pluribus, is putting people in a situation where, where they can experience something. Uh, and it's, it's not that obvious uh, to take the, the time to, to live that kind of experiences. We understand stereotypes, we understand uh, biases, gender biases, gender stereotypes, but if we don't feel them by living an experience, it will uh, stay something that is uh, theoretical. And we want uh, people to be engaged. So training people is absolutely key, key. And training men especially is absolutely key if you want them to change something. And we see that in the, uh, when we uh, train uh, people. At the end of the day, they have something that has changed in their, in, in their eyes. And it helps uh, them to, to move, uh, to go ahead and, and come back at work and say, OK, I, I have... Uh, I got something new from, from that day and I will change uh, something in my, in my behaviors. Some other um, possibilities, uh, not many, but there is one that I would like to highlight. It's, it's mentoring. Being a mentor or being mentored uh, by the other gender is also an eye-opener. I remember this leader say, uh, who was uh, mentoring, and it was a man mentoring a, a, a woman, and uh, the woman said, you know, uh, I'm part of an executive committee. I'm the only woman. And when we have our monthly meetings, uh, I look at, uh, at the agenda. And always and always, I'm at the end of the day uh, when all, all the people are, uh, all the, are, are tired and want to go back. Uh, and uh, that's uh, something uh, I, I, cannot, uh, I cannot change. Uh, oh, there is a problem with sound. No. No. Okay. I had uh, some uh, feedback, and uh, and uh, the guy j just realized that he was doing exactly the same thing. So by having this private personal relation with somebody who is not uh, with different, it can be a question of uh, of gender, but of uh, generation, of culture, culture, whatever, helps you to understand that uh, people experience other things. So first, understanding with head. Second, uh, feeling and uh, being emotionally engaged through uh, uh, experiences such as mentoring or others. And then you can act. And it's true that uh, if we uh, provide men with opportunities to act, and I think we need to help them, otherwise they don't know what to do exactly. So for instance, uh, I think it's uh, important to open all the networks uh, in companies to men. Um, I'm, uh, I'm really in favor of uh, gender networks more than uh, women networks, even if I understand that uh, there, there, there is a need for some uh, safe places for women to, to uh, share their, their views. But 
I think we have also to have uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, those networks. It can be also to ask them to speak uh, to speak out to speak up. Um, if you provide, if we ask a man to uh, to to be a panelist in a, in a conference, he will have to uh, to uh, to dive into the topic and and will improve his uh, his uh, personal understanding of uh, what uh, it means to be a man or woman in a company. So it's providing opportunities for men to act. First age understanding with head. Second age it's feeling with your heart with your guts. And third age uh, in hand. Acting, and uh, uh, that's where we need to help. When I say we need to help, it's of course uh, uh, something that women can help doing so, but also the HR people, the diversity managers have to uh, focus also on engaging men through concrete actions. Otherwise, it will uh, stay something that is uh, nice to read, and uh, uh, it's lovely to see that on our website, but it's it's not not it's not for me. It's for women or it's for uh, HR people. So the three H work very well when it comes to engaging people, to engaging men especially. And uh, and, uh, it's, uh, uh, and of course, uh, and of course we need also to uh, to highlight uh, and to uh, to to make visible the role models that we have. I'm happy to see more and more men being. Uh, uh, nice uh, efficient role models i was attending a, a gender conference uh, this week and i i met new men i have never met before and they are seeing uh, things differently they are modern and the more we make them visible the better impact we will have so that's what i wanted to to, to share uh, we have a strange one i don't know if you have that on youtube the sound is fading away, but we can we can still uh, clearly. Uh, you. Thank you so much for uh, reminding us the importance of uh, engaging men. I mean, of course, men and women, but uh, using the lens of the three H. I think it's uh, it's very important to engage the heads, the heart, and the hands. It just reminds me that uh, two weeks ago I was. Uh, uh, facilitating uh, some some workshops on gender cultural differences so it was a, a, a network I, I was uh, giving that presentation and conversation I should say with men and women in the room to understand and value our commonalities and our differences and I would say in the same way as you said it Jean-Michel the fact that men and women were having the conversations together to raise the awareness, so to move from I don't know what I don't know to, oh, I know that I don't know and I would like to know, so let's have conversation. And I think that today in organizations, our role is to encourage this dialogue, that this conversation between men and women. And it's the part of the how. The how is to create a space, a, a, a healthy, um, you know, healthy space for men and women to talk about it. So, you know, men and women can understand each other and, uh, and uh, explore how we as women and men can work better together. There is, I don't know if people uh, uh, in, in the call can read some of the conversations. So you have Q's and A's, but you have another place you could write comments. And I think, uh, uh, there is a story, uh, I'm just going to read it up, very, uh, if, if people can't read it. So here is a, a similar situation. I now live near the beach and see volumes of plastic washed up on the beach. And yet far away in restaurants, I used to use straws and use plastic unthinkingly. So it's not until it's in my face do I fully understand the scale of the problem care and start doing something. The amount of plastic washed up makes you physically sick to your stomach to see it. But I did not feel it uh, from the sea. It's, it's the same for men and diversity. It's not in their face. So I really believe that by having conversation, by sharing some of our, you know, sometimes anecdotes of when sometimes women are facing, uh, you know, challenges will help also for men to understand the situation. 
So the engagement of the head, the heart, and the hands are critical. Definitely, I completely agree with you uh, on the importance of dialogue. Because I think the mistakes that we have a problem, have a problem with problem. men, so let's talk to women. Now we are going to move with men, let's talk to men. No, of course it's about uh, initiating the dialogue. Uh, and that's why it's important to have both men and women also. And as a man, it's true that my voice may be uh, uh, different from yours, but alone, I would feel extremely uh, weak in my uh, capacity to influence people because I, I think it would be uh, reversing the, the issue, saying uh, men coming, uh, a man coming to, uh, to talk to men, it's, uh, it's, it's, it may have a, a small impact but it's, it's less than a joint, uh, a jo uh, two voices. So uh, I, I, anything I, I, I do and uh, we do a lot uh, together, Isabel, is to having two voices and the two voices are equally heard. That's uh, when we talk about gender balance, the best thing to do is to show it, not only to talk about it. And uh, engaging in a dialogue, a dialogue is not something that uh, is uh, easy to, uh, to do because uh, it's true that in the beginning, and it's been a bit of my surprise in the past years, uh, we may see men a bit hesitant, a bit uh, uh, resistant, uh, because uh, they don't feel comfortable with that. The good thing is that then we, when they realize that it's not about, about feel, making them feel guilty, that things start to change. We don't want men to feel guilty. We want men to feel committed, to feel engaged, to change some things and to build uh, uh, another uh, way of working together with women. No, thank, thank you, uh, Jean-Michel. The, the, what you are um, talking about, the, we don't want anyone to feel guilty. I think it's very, very important. It's not about saying something is wrong or you're wrong, I'm right. No, it's just building bridges between men and women, between women and men, to value and respect each other. And it's called, I would say, inclusive leadership behaviors. So when we are promoting um, the, the key competencies of being inclusive, whether you're a man or a woman, it means that you want, as a person, as a leader, as a manager, as an employee, as a colleague, you want to, to be inclusive, meaning you want to value yourself and others so it's about respecting and valuing our differences and commentalities someone from the uh, participants used uh, a very uh, interesting uh, uh, sentence to explain to to sensitize to summarize she's called let's call it informed empathy informed empathy and it's true that when you are creating the dialogue the space for of this dialogue we are uh, creating uh, a, a natural empathy because now you're aware. If we are not aware, if we are not talking about the issue, then it's totally, uh, you know, people are totally oblivious. So I think that we all have a role to play to speak up. Yes. And to speak up in a very constructive way. We are talking about the, the constructive feedback, for example, which is a way of focusing on the facts, the feeling, and explain why, and then asking for something to change. But having the possibility to give and to receive feedback is uh, uh, critical to create that inclusion and to have this informed uh, empathy. Uh, yeah. just we have another five minutes, so I don't know, Jean-Michel, if uh, you have something to add or are we asking for something? Yes, I, I would just wanted to add something and come back so, uh, on, on something I just mentioned, which is behaviors. You say that uh, it's, it's important that men are committed, but both men and women, if they are committed, if they are engaged in, uh, in inclusion, uh, they, will, uh, they, they will, of course, uh, uh, have... Uh, uh, a big influence in changing the culture to make it inclusive but sometimes we are suffering from uh, a lack of tools what does it mean to be inclusive 
I think it's really, uh, really, really close to the company culture. Uh, and that's why I'm seeing things that I really like. It's companies that have done quite a lot on, in the DNI journey that are uh, creating their uh, uh, inclusive behaviors. And I've, I've seen that in my previous company and we have uh, some clients that are working hard on that saying, okay, we train people, we engage people, and now we want also them to understand what, what is expected from them what, uh, as a inclusive men and women. And it's not inclusive behaviors for men and inclusive behaviors for women, it's inclusive behaviors for uh, human beings in, uh, in, in the workplace. And I'm seeing that more and more, and I think it's really interesting because it's based on, uh, on, uh, on the work that is uh, done in the companies. It helps also to engage men, if we come back to the topic of this uh, conference, because sometimes they say, okay, I understand, I felt something in that training or in that experience in, uh, in, in mentoring, for instance, or being part of, of a network. I understand, I understand uh, more, but help me by giving me some tips. What should I do? What should you should do is to be inclusive in your behaviors, and this is uh, the list of uh, the behaviors that, as a company, we have uh, uh, created, and that's where, by the way, you could be uh, evaluated. Uh, we could evaluate people by the, uh, their ability to be inclusive and not only by the, the money that they deliver. Uh, I think it's a great way to engage men. It's uh, uh, providing them with the behavior that they should, um, they should uh, respect, put in place, and, uh, and uh, also promote with, uh, within their teams. Thank you. Thank you. So we have another couple of minutes in case... Uh some participants would like to post uh, uh, a question. So I'm just looking at the list. In case. Maybe I have one question very briefly. Ben. I think you already mentioned a little bit, but just to, 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 to get your point on that. Do you think, do you think that, um, especially in organization, you need men to engage men? Do you think it will have a better voice for men to engage other men? Uh, that's a great question. That's a great question. I, actually, it's, it's true that I have a, a lot of uh, um, uh, cl clients that come to, to me and say uh, we need a, a male voice. And that's where I'm trying to answer. I think it would be better with two voices. But uh, um, to answer your, your, your question, men talking to men, it's... Uh, it, it can help some, uh, at some point, but it, it should be just one uh, short moment. I think it, it's, uh, uh, it's important to have the, the, the two voices, uh, as I said. But it's true also that as men, there are things that uh, I can say that would be said differently by a woman. If I speak to a woman, I think I can have an impact, but perhaps it would be different. Not only because I'm a man, also because I'm uh, who I am. So. Uh, the problem, the fact is that as of today, there are not that many men that are visible, that are uh, uh, speaking up on, on this topic. So the few men that are speaking uh, are very visible. Uh, and I think we have a responsibility uh, also uh, as men. So uh, responsibility is to speak up and to, uh, to, to, to create a space to share this space with others, women, other generations too. Uh, so there is a specific voice, but it's not me as a man who can uh, just solve the problem because I'm, I'm able to talk to, to men. Of course not. I need, uh, I need uh, uh, the other voice too with me. And I love to do it so. Thank you so much, Jean-Michel. Thank you for sharing your insights. And thank you for being that, uh, you know, role model. It's, um, you know, it's, it has been a pleasure to, uh, I mean, to have this, uh, this webinar, but also to witness you as a, as a person, as a man, being a truly committed inclusion and diversity champion and, and, and promoting gender balance and promoting uh, inclusion in the, in the world. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to close the, um, the, the webinar just by saying that, as I mentioned earlier, 
this webinar has been recorded. Thank you everyone for your participation with all your questions. In case you want to have more questions, you want to follow up, do not hesitate to send Jean-Michel or myself you know, uh, your questions. Please do so. We'll be more than happy to follow up with you. And the last piece, on Thursday, the 28th of June, which is in exactly one month, we'll have our next uh, free webinar hosted this time by Nicolas Deschel, who is based in Switzerland, and the topic will be inclusion and diversity in the agile workplace. So thank you very much. It was very inspiring uh, to, to hear you, Jean-Michel, and, and thank you for all the questions and, and for the participants. Thank you, everyone.